Come on in, everybody, here to Auburn Undercover, auburnundercover.com. Nathan King here with Jason Caldwell. Um, Auburn season opener against Vermont. Couldn't have gone much better um, for the Tigers, 94 to 43. It is the biggest margin of victory of the entire Bruce Pearl era against a uh, against a Division One opponent. And Jason, you know, we talked about it all week and leading up to this game. And Auburn players have been talking about Vermont for a couple weeks now. Yeah. Comparing this team to Yale, Bruce Pearl knew they needed to, to prepare like this as an NCAA tournament team because Vermont's made three straight tournaments. They're picked to go to a fourth in the America East Conference, but a combination of defense getting things started and then you shoot like that and this building caught fire. And this was about as impressive a performance in, uh, in game one as you could ask for from yeah, this team. Yeah, you had Chad Baker Mazar kind of getting you off to the start, had 11 first half points and kind of had a little mini run of his own with, yeah. a, with a couple of threes that, that kind of got... They created some separation, and once they created separation, you know, Vermont's not a team that's built to come back in that scenario. And what it did is it basically allowed Auburn to just attack, and they attacked all night long. And that was as impressive a game as I can remember. You know, when you start talking about the, the circumstances, yeah. it's the opening game of the season. Um, this is a team that's played a game. They played two nights ago and, and beat UAB in Birmingham. Didn't turn it over very much. And, well, you're, I mean, you're right. It's overwhelming in right. every category, everything you look at. Auburn just overwhelmed. What's a pretty good basketball team? I mean, John Becker is in his 14th season at Vermont. Uh, five NCAA tournaments, 13 combined conference titles. Um, they've never lost under 20 games when he's been there. As he said after the game, he said, "You know, you're a proud program." And so he was like, "No, we don't. We're not used to that. You're not used to getting beat by 50, regardless of who you're playing." And that's the thing too, Jason, is that even if Auburn hadn't been playing. Um, you know, a team like Vermont, this would have been impressive regardless. For me, the, the defensive side of things, I mean, this is a this is a slow it down, experienced, hyper efficient. Me and Patrick are going back through the numbers after the game. They they have only shot before this game. They'd only shot under thirty percent in one game in his entire career. I mean, that that's unbelievable um, from an offensive perspective. I mean, yes, if this is the worst offensive game they've ever had. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a very disciplined um, team that that is very efficient. And you mentioned like like their pace of play. They don't want to play fast. Auburn was able to speed them up and create some turnovers. And um, you're, you're defensively, it did set the tone. I mean, like like they scored 43, but for a long time you wondered if they were even going to get to 30. And, yep. and, and I mean, it was deep into the second half before they got to even 30 uh, in this game. And so, um, yeah, you know, we hadn't even really, really talked about Miles Kelly. Um, that that second half for him. Early on, you could see some rust in his game, yep. but once he found the rhythm, it, it was like, it was like a, I don't, I, I'm trying to remember anybody that I can compare it to. Obviously, Bryce Brown yeah, had a few of those games, um, but it was like unconscious. He said, hey, I, I think I blacked out for a while, and I think I, he I did too. Him. It was pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, Samir Doughty is one that kind of yeah. comes to mind of a guy who just catch and shoot, didn't really matter how yeah. much defense was in his face. Seven of nine from deep for Miles Kelly. Five um, or five in the second half. Yeah, I mean, he, he started, like Jason said, he started the game 0 for 3. That was a guy that, if you if you read between the lines, you don't really have to read that much between the lines, but if you listened to Auburn players this offseason, they were they were telling us over and over again, number one, that he was the best shooter on the team, but number two, that he, that he had an impact on this team that was just going to be able to open things up. Of course, he's not going to be unconscious like this every single night, but it just kind of goes to show the, the versatility that they have. Um, in the backcourt. Speaking of versatility, Jason, you know, they, they decide to start Janai Broom and Dylan Cargill again together. They did that throughout the preseason in those two exhibitions, but it was Chaney Johnson it's, coming off the bench, six of eight from the floor in only 16 it, minutes. It's going to be really hard to, to limit his minutes the way yep. he's playing right I now. I agree. Uh, 13 and nine, what, what, yep, 16 that minutes. Mm -hmm. um, aggressive, physical rebounding. He's finishing and, and making plays. Obviously, much different scenario when you get to Houston. Uh, it'll be a bigger, more physical team, but Chaney has gotten bigger. Um, these, this, this Florida Atlantic and now Vermont, he's been maybe the biggest thing for me that I was like, okay, sure. what question mark do you have about this basketball team? It was, can Chaney Johnson be a 25 minute a game guy? And boy, so far, I haven't seen anything that tells me he can't. Yeah, and, and like Jason said, that's something Bruce Pearl pointed out after the game. He was so physical and athletic on the inside. Both of those are going to ramp up big time against what is the Ken Palm number one team in the country. Um, Auburn after the game becomes the Ken Palm number two team in the I mean number one and number two not the AP poll but in the in the most advanced uh, you know referenced computer metrics there uh, Jason this is a game against Vermont Bruce Pearl talked about this week he said he was glad to go against a good opponent because he felt like it was good for, to set them up as opposed to somebody who, who's not really yeah. that much of a good team 
now you have almost the challenge if you're Auburn staff of, and you heard Bruce Pearl saying it after the game, you heard Denver Jones saying it after the game. He's like, yeah, we, we missed a lot of rotations on defense and stuff like that. They are going to make sure they don't let any of this go to their head. Bruce Pearl said after the game that, you know, hey, don't read too much into this. We shot it really well. They're going to make sure that they are obviously prepared for Saturday and what is going to be one of the biggest games in non-conference yeah, and, yeah, this year. and completely different opponent when right. you look at it. I mean, you're going to – now, Houston's not a team that wants to go score 100 either, but they are so physical and so athletic – and the defense that Auburn's going to see, that's the difference. Offensively, Vermont, you go, hey, defensively, it's going to be a completely different challenge for Auburn. And so now you, you flip the page and you go, okay, this was a great one. And it was an ad, absolutely a overwhelming performance. And now you flip the page because that's basketball. And you go, okay, on to the next. Yeah, and like Bruce Pearl said, they, they – planned it out for teams in the preseason. I mean, you go to practice and they're scouting like they're UNC, who they're not even sure they're going to see yeah. in Maui. They're scouting like they're Houston. But, but they truly do take it one game at a time. Yeah. So they're going to, like Jason said, they're going to turn the page tomorrow um, to Houston. That'll be a, that'll be an incredible game, ESPNU at uh, 8 o'clock on Saturday. For Jason Caldwell, I'm Nathan King. Auburn takes it here in the season opener, 94-43 to over Vermont. We'll see you guys over on the basketball board and at auburnundercover.com.